We're now going to talk a little bit about digital. So up until now, I think that the categorization and the classification has been pretty straightforward. If you look at an instrument and the interface and the sound is very indicative of something from the past, you probably know that it's an emulation. If you have an instrument that has an analog sound, but you can't really tell what exact instrument it's trying to emulate, chances are it's virtual analog. But when you get into digital, the waters become a little bit more muddy. And honestly, however you decide to classify something is completely up to you. After this series of lessons is over, you can honestly throw all of that classification stuff out the window if you want to, and just focus on what sound is gonna fit best for the song you're using. But to make things a little bit easier for us all moving forward, I do like to use the categories. And so for me, when I talk about a digital synthesizer, I'm thinking of something that's really using the computer to do things that you just wouldn't expect to see on a hardware unit, whether that's virtual analog or just a straight up analog synthesizer from the past. And so we're looking here at Serum, which is the perfect example of something that gives you a lot of like virtual analog controls. We have, you know, a, a Moog low pass filter. We have drive, we have these fat controls. We have unison detune all the things we're expecting to see in a virtual analog synthesizer. But at the same time, there's a ton of customization we can do. We can load up wavetables and have it change and move over time and have that be controlled by an LFO. We can set up multiple envelopes. We have a drag and drop art, um, architecture. We have these additional macro controls that we can use if we want so, so much at our fingertips. And even when I go into the filter, I have like a hundred different filters I can choose from. That that is to me is saying this is digital. So when I think of digital synthesizers, even if they have a very analog sound, I'm thinking of things like Massive, like Zebra, like Serum, like Reactor, at least in its architecture, and everything in between, like the really experimental stuff, because this instrument is really based around the idea that you can use code and you can use the computer to shape sound in ways that people weren't thinking about shaping sound with analog synthesizers or with virtual analog synthesizers. That was more about, let's see how close we can get this sound, how big, how fat, how rich, how nice can the filters be. With this instrument, it's all about customization. So when we listen to this sound you can hear that there are elements to, uh, of like an analog sound like there you can hear that it kind of has that feel to it but at the same time i think there's also a distinct sound to this instrument that makes it a little more digital there's sort of like this cleanness this preciseness but that doesn't have to be a consideration when you are classifying an instrument because again it all just comes down to and you're going to want to like kill me at the end of this week but it all comes down to what is going to sound best in the track that you're working on it's not as if there's the best synthesizer out there not true at all. It's about using what is going to fit. Okay, so I want to continue to put that point home. So this is Serum. This is a paid instrument. We're not going to be working with this really. I just want to show you that as an example. What we're going to be using is an instrument called Helm. And it's still in its early stages. But again, to me, this is just screaming digital. The interface, the way that we're going to be setting up modulation, everything about this seems digital to me. So if I listen back to it also... It's a very digital sounding instrument. It's not complete. This is still in the early stages, at least when I'm working with it. Uh, when this course is released and when you're using it, it might be a lot different. But for now, what I'm hearing is a very kind of um, almost harsh sound, but that doesn't harsh doesn't need to be considered a bad thing. It, that's just the way I'm hearing it. And there would be times when something like this might fit just fine. So if we look at this instrument right now, we actually do have a voice control on the polyphony. So right now, I can't play chords, but I can crank this all the way up or I can put it somewhere in the middle and then I would be able to play chords. 
albeit quite ugly sounding, at least for now. But there isn't any sort of detuning or multiple voice control from the articulation section. So that's just giving me the ability to really play polyphonically. Where I'm actually going to get into the multiple voices and detuning is inside of the oscillators themselves. So we have our different oscillator shape selections, and then we can choose the mix control like we've seen with other instruments. Do we want it to be all the way to the left, oscillator one, or all the way to the right, oscillator number two? or as a right oscillator zero and oscillator number one. So if I change this to a square wave, and then I swing over here, we're gonna hear a sine wave. And what's cool about this is we can set up kind of even uh, a little bit of a, uh, a poor man's version of wavetable synthesis. So if I go to like a sawtooth and then I take an LFO here, I can set the LFO to modulate in between and I could do it either really fast or quite slowly and let's actually take this guy and let's like transpose it down an octave and if we want we could speed this up and then we could even go in if we wanted and use like another envelope here to control this so in this case, what I might do is start it over here more towards saw wave, and I'm going to want it to eventually kind of cross over. Let's see how this works. So you see how that's changing? So kind of an annoying sound right now, but you can, that really a very annoying sound, but you can see just how much flexibility you have here. And we even have a cross modulation between the two. So maybe I want to use an additional LFO to control that. And I can even change the height, the depth and the different shapes. So let's choose something like this. Let's give it a, let's flip it around like so. Let's put this into free time. Into Hertz, that's what I wanted something pretty fast. You can even go into audio rate here. So once we go over that 20 Hertz, but I'm going to put it down into low frequency oscillator territory. And I'm going to put that onto this mod cross modulator here. So let's see if we can create something a little bit more usable out of this right now. So I'm going to go ahead and put the sub on. And let's start messing around with the voice control so that we can kind of widen this sound out a little bit, smooth it out. Grab a filter in here. No, I'm not liking that. You can see that we get readouts on top as well. And now we can get into some of the other elements that are unique to this instrument. So we have this format filter. Kind of harsh sounding, but maybe when we add in a reverb, it won't be quite so harsh. Let's use the step sequencer and just kind of play around with this a little bit. 
This is going to be very interesting the way this is going to jump around. So let's go ahead and leave that on quarter notes. That should be fine. And I'm going to turn on in a second. Smooth out those steps. Actually, have it being controlled by the step sequencer, so even more interesting. So, like, that's a second order modulation going on there. You don't need to know what that means right now, but let's add in the reverb. And some delay. And then if we want, we could even have like the mod wheel or something control the uh, cutoff. So if I put this on, I now can play and then use the mod wheel. Uh, not, it's not making the biggest difference in the world, but it definitely will right here. So in my own opinion, this is a pretty interesting sound and I think it would probably be usable. So it's just a matter of experimenting a little bit and seeing what you can come up with. And definitely when you're using a digital synthesizer like this, use some of those unique features, use the stutter, use the format, you know, do the cross modulation, do things that makes this different from the virtual analog synthesizers or the emulation synthesizers that we've looked at before, because that's kind of the whole point in having the different tools is that you can try to use their different features to come out with different sounds at the end.